Here I have two errors declared, an enum called math error and an enum called parse error. And then I have two functions, f1 will return a result where the error type is math error, and f2 is again a result where the error type is a parse error. For simplicity, they both return the error. So remember in the last video, we used a question operator to call multiple functions that return a result, and then here also return a result. But remember that the error type either had to be the same, or they must be able to convert to a single type. In this case, when we call f1 with the question operator, it will return a result of math error. And calling f2 will return a result where the error type is a parse error. These two types are different. So what should the error type be over here? Well, if you put math error, then it matches the error type for f1, but not for f2. And likewise, if you change this to a parse error, then it matches the error type for f2, but not for f1. One way we can solve this is to create another type where both the math error and the parse error will be converted into that error type. However, if you're feeling lazy, here's a magic trick that you can use. It's called box dyn and then say std error error. So to fully understand what this part of the code is doing, you'll have to keep watching the future videos. But for now, think that this is like a magic spell where if you write this code, you'll be able to return any error type that implements this error. And of course, currently you're seeing errors. What we need to do is write some code so that both the math error and the parse error will implement a trait called std error error. I'll explain what traits are in another video. For now, think that by implementing the trait for error, both math error and parse error will have a behavior that is defined by this error trait. And what it allows us to do is to return different types of error that all implement this error trait. Okay, so let's implement a error trait for math error and parse error. Let's start with math error. We need to write some code so that the math error implements any behavior that is required by this error trait. And don't worry if you didn't understand what that meant, I'll explain about traits in another video. For this code to work, all you have to remember is that you'll have to paste the following code. So we'll start by saying impl, means implement. Implement std error error for math error. Okay, try to compile a contract and it gives some errors. Notice over here, it says consider annotating math error with derived debug. So let's do that. Derive debug. Okay, so that error went away, but we still have another error. Let's try to compile the contract to see what the detail there is. Cargo build. Okay, and then I see some errors. Scoring up. Okay, here's the error. Math error cannot be formatted with the default formatter. And then it also has a helpful message. The trait std fmt display is not implemented for math error. So let's try to fix this. Try to implement std fmt display for math error. So here we'll say implement std fmt display for math error. And here is the function that we'll need to implement called fmt. It takes in several things and the function signature looks a little bit confusing and scary. But what you need to know for this video is that self refers to the enum math error. And the way that we can fix this compilation errors is to simply say write followed by f which comes from the input and then let's put in any string. For example, let's say math error. Okay, save the file and the compilation error goes away. Basically, it will format all math error as a string math error. And if you wanted to print this math error in more details, let's use the debug attribute that we added to this math error enum. Curly braces, colon, question mark, followed by self. Again, remember that self here refers to the math enum, math error enum. Okay, and then save the file and the code compiles. And also notice that the error that was over here is gone. So we've successfully implemented std error error for math error. Now we need to do the same for the second error, parse error, but this time it's going to be easy since I'm going to copy most of the code. Parse error. And then let's do the same over here. First we need to add the debug attribute. And then we need to implement std fmt display for parse error. Change this to parse error. Okay, and then inside here, let's change the error message. Let's say parse error. Here, note that self refers to parse error. Okay, and let's see, our error went away. And what we basically did here was we wrote a ton of code and now both the math error and the parse error is converted into a trait called std error error. So that is why our code compiles. Let's try calling this function f3. z is equal to call the function f3. And then let's just simply print this out. z is equal to. And then execute the code. cargo run dash dash bin box dyn 
error. Okay, and our code compiles with the error message div by zero. So this is a basic example of returning result with different error types by simply saying box dyn std error error. And in most cases, if you're writing production code, the standard errors already implement this, so you don't have to write this confusing code. And to show you this, let me show you a practical example. Here is a practical example. I have two functions. The first function will read a text file from a file path and then store each line into a vector. In the OK case, it will return a vector of string. If there was some kind of error, then it will return the error of stdio error. And then we have a function called sum. This function will take the vector of strings from the previous function, try to parse each line into an i32, and then sum the total. If there was no error, then it will return the total of each line. If there was an error, then it will return a parse int error. So now let's try calling these two function. So we'll first call the function read to get the file content, and then call the function sum to parse each line and then sum the total. Let's do this inside the main function. So let's first call the function read. Okay, and then it's gonna take in the file path. For this example, I've created a file called boxduinerror.txt, and it has the numbers one, two, three, four, and five. This file is stored under data box dyn error.txt. Okay, so going back, you'll need to read the file path from data box dyn error.txt. And then let's use a question operator. Let's get the result. That, let's say lines is equal to. So this is the okay case. We need to change the function signature for the main. This will be result. Let's say in the okay case, we will simply print out the total. So we will return an empty tuple. In the error case, we want to be able to return different types of error. So we'll say box dyn std error error. Let's first return the OK case. OK with an empty tuple. Next, let's call the function sum. That, let's say total is equal to call the function sum, pass in the lines that were read from the previous function. The function sum returns a result. Let's use a question operator. Notice that the code compiles. The function sum returns a parse int error, and the function read returns a std io error. However, we're able to use this question mark on different error types. The code compiles. Finally, let's print this out. Print ln total is equal to total. And then let's execute the code. And the code executed without any errors. The total is equal to 15. In this video, I showed you how to use this magical syntax box dyn std error error to return different error types inside a result.